Chanukah, the Gemara in Shabbat, Daf Chaf Alef, Amud Bet, deals with Chanukah. And it starts off by talking about the obligation of everybody to light the Chanukah lights and to place them in public so that everybody can see and remember the miracle. The question is, what was the miracle? Was the miracle the fact that the light burnt for eight days instead of one? Or was the miracle the conquest and the destruction of the Greeks? The Gemara talks about the obligation to light and then seems to change the emphasis from the light and the candles to the emphasis on the Beit Hashmonai, the Hasmonean victory over the Greeks, and when they rededicated the temple, they found only enough oil to last for one day, and it lasted for eight. The Gemara goes on, seemingly, then to discuss something irrelevant. What happens when a camel or a donkey loaded with flax, flammable material, walks through the narrow alleyways of an oriental market. What happens if there's a blacksmith and this blacksmith is causing sparks to fly, they ignite the flax and it's destroyed? Is he guilty? Does he have to pay damages? Answer is yes. What happens on the other hand if the camel or the donkey leans in on the store and it catches fire? Then we say they're guilty, the owner of the horse and or the donkey or the camel. The exception to this is Hanukkah, where the lights have to be in a public place, everybody knows in advance, and has to be careful of it. And then Rav Kahana quotes Rav Natan Bar Minyuni as saying that it's important, as a matter of principle, that the lights of Hanukkah should be placed lower than 20 amma. You might think that because of the danger they should be placed higher above, but like Sukkah and like the Mavoi, that's the little narrow alleyway where to make it private property so you can carry, you have to put a beam over the top and it has to be lower than 20 amma so that everybody can recognize it. And that's why one has to be able to recognize the miracle of Hanukkah. And that's why for Hanukkah, you are free from any damages. And then Rav Kahana goes on to quote Rav Natan Bar Minyumi, seemingly irrelevant, that when Joseph came out of Egypt, he, to bury his father in Marat Machpelah, the cave of Machpelah, he went by the pit that he was thrown into, which the Torah had said, the pit is empty, Bo reik ein bo maim, there's no water. Isn't it obvious that if it was empty there was no water? So, says the Midrash, no, because inside there were snakes and scorpions. And there was a miracle, because normally scorpions and snakes would kill somebody thrown in on them, but in this situation they didn't. And uh, Yosef went via this pit to make a brachan having been delivered. The obligation of saying a bracha is only when a miracle happens, keneged hateva. Um, it's unusual, it's not natural, it's an unnatural miracle. Otherwise, in the natural course of events, it isn't the sort of miracle you make a blessing over. What's the connection with Hanukkah? The answer, according to the Meshe Chochma, is that Hanukkah too was a miracle against nature. It wasn't just one person beating up another person. And just as Yosef had to make a bracha to celebrate the miracle that was unusual, Keneget HaTeva, of Hanukkah, of, of uh, the pit, so we make the bracha over Hanukkah. What this all tells us is that there are two ways of looking at the miracle. The miracle was a military victory, yes, but the miracle also was that the light lasted longer than one expected it to, and that was a miracle. One, if you like, was a physical miracle. The other was, if you like, a spiritual miracle. In other words, the victory of Hanukkah required both the physical force and the spiritual commitment. And 
that is the message of Hanukkah, which is as relevant today as it ever have been. Some of us will glorify the physical side, some of us will glorify the spiritual, and some of us will glorify both. That's what makes Hanukkah such an amazing festival. I hope you'll enjoy it.